It is Friday, August 30th. I'm Sam Cedar. And I'm Lucy Steiner. Which one of these stories will you be talking about today? Senate Democrats' campaign arm is caught pressuring consultants not to work with a leading progressive candidate in Colorado. Meanwhile, the death toll from an Ebola outbreak in Africa climbs to 2,000 people. Lastly, Trump says the U.S. will drop military forces in Afghanistan to 8,600 troops under a new peace deal with the Taliban. You're listening to Majority.fm's AM Quickie. And these are the stories you need to know. The Intercept reports that the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee pressured consultants from at least five firms not to work with a leading progressive candidate in the 2020 Colorado Senate race. Andrew Romanoff, who is one of more than a dozen candidates vying for Republican Senator Cory Gardner's seat, told The Intercept that multiple consultants turned down jobs with his campaign, citing pressure from the DSCC. A consultant who spoke to The Intercept on the condition of anonymity said that their firm had been in talks to work for Romanoff when they got word that Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer wasn't happy, and the firm was told by the DSCC that they were, quote, absolutely under no circumstances could they work for Andrew Romanoff, and withdrew the offer to be his consulting firm. And by the way, the DSCC endorsed former Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper last week, who once said he wasn't cut out for the Senate and who also dropped out of the 2020 presidential race in August after barely even moving the needle. Well done, Chuck Schumer. Keep up the good work. The BBC reports that over 2,000 people have died from an Ebola outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's the second worst outbreak of the disease on record. The world's largest epidemic took place between 2014 and 2016, which killed more than 11,000 people in West Africa. Meanwhile, the DR Congo's neighboring country of Uganda confirmed that a nine-year-old girl with Ebola who had crossed the border has died. The World Health Organization has called the Ebola outbreak one of the world's most complex humanitarian crises and a, quote, public health emergency of international concern. Majority.fm's AM Quickie is fueled by JustCoffee.coop. Just Coffee is a worker-owned coffee roaster based in Madison, Wisconsin that has sponsored the Majority Report for nearly a decade. Check out their collection of fair trade roasts, including our own Majority Report blend. And regardless of what you order, receive 10% off your order when you use the code MAJORITY at checkout. And all shipping is free. That's coupon code MAJORITY at justcoffee.coop. The U.S. will cut its military forces in Afghanistan to 8,600 troops, the Trump administration said on Thursday. This is the first on-the-record confirmation of that number, and Politico reports that the Taliban's main demand in the negotiations is that all U.S. forces leave Afghanistan. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs said yesterday that it's, quote, premature to discuss whether the U.S. would eventually meet that demand or would insist on a stay-behind counterterrorism force aimed at the Islamic State and al-Qaeda. Trump, however, said that the counterterrorism forces will remain in Afghanistan well after the withdrawal. We're going to always have a presence, Trump told Fox News Radio. We're going to have to have high intelligence. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, forever wars. Now for some quicker quickies. Quicker quickie. Final lineup for the third Democratic debate is set for a single night in Houston in two weeks on September 12th. The 10 candidates will appear on stage in the following order from left to right. Amy Klobuchar, Cory Booker, Pete Buttigieg, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, Andrew Yang, Beto O'Rourke, and Julian Castro. We'll be covering it live on the Majority Report on that evening. Politico reports that the Democratic National Committee will recommend rejecting a plan for virtual caucuses in Iowa and Nevada, introducing a level of uncertainty in the caucus states ahead of the upcoming election season. Kay Ivey, Republican governor of Alabama, has apologized for participating in a racist skit that involved blackface when she was a college student. And Hurricane Dorian is set to turn into a Category 4 storm with winds topping 130 miles per hour before it makes landfall on Labor Day. Models are predicting the full force of the storm could make it to the center of Florida. Quicker! Quickie! That's it, folks. Thanks for listening to Majority.fm's AM Quickie. Lucy? Thank you, Sam. Don't forget to check out the Majority Report today at noon, wherever your podcasts are found.